Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture on Introduction to Virtual Cloud Network. My name is uh, Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. So what is a virtual cloud network? Virtual cloud network, OCA virtual cloud network is a private network that you set up in Oracle data centers with firewall rules and specific type of communication gateways that you can choose to use. Uh, a VCN covers a single contiguous IPv4 CIDR block of your choice. In the previous lecture series, a uh, lecture module, uh, we looked into CIDR and um, how you can use CIDR notation. So if you have not watched that uh, video, uh, please go back and, and take a look. Uh, but it, uh, your VCN uh, covers, you know, this contigu single contiguous IPv4 block, CIDR block. Today we just support uh, IPv4 and not IPv6. A VCN resides uh, within a single um, region. So how does this uh, this work? We'll, we'll look into um, uh, more details, but first look into what does uh, a VCN, uh, how is a VCN represented? So a VCN is simply represented by a CIDR range here. Uh, and the guidance here says, you know, you, you should use ranges which don't overlap with your on-premises or other uh, networks you are, you are using. So uh, first things uh, first here, this is this is the CIDR notation we looked into the previous um, uh, lecture. This is what is called uh, RFC 1918 uh, ranges. So our recommendation is to use private IP address ranges specified in RFC 1918. Now what these, what is this RFC uh, 1918 uh, mean? RFC 1918 was used to create the standards by which networking equipment assigns IP addresses in a private network. So these are for private internets. Um, now, RFC 1918 reserves the following range of IP addresses that cannot be routed on the internet. So the first one is this, 8 uh, slash 8 prefix. The second one is uh, 172.16 slash 12. And the third range is 192.168 slash 16. Now we looked into this in the previous uh, module. So this one goes all the way from .16.0.0 uh, all the way to .16 dot uh, uh, sorry to dot 31 dot 255 dot 255 we looked into these in the previous uh, previous uh, module uh, this one goes all the way from 192.168.0.0 dot 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 all the way to uh, 168.0 dot uh, 168.255.255 dot dot uh, and of course the first one 10.0.0. Dot zero dot zero dot zero slash eight goes all the way from ten dot zero dot zero dot zero all the way to ten dot two fifty five dot two fifty five uh, dot two fifty five now one thing to keep in mind uh, is that um, again these are not addressable on the public internet you can assign these ranges within a private uh, network uh, each address is unique within that network, but not outside of it. Now, one thing to keep in mind, because this comes up uh, a lot of time, is OCI within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure VCN, the size we support is slash 16 to slash 30. So even though we say, you know, use these recommended RFC 1918 ranges, we don't support a slash 88 range, for example, right? So we only support, this will come up in the exam also, slash 16, to slash 30 and remember as your number becomes subnet mask becomes bigger your networks becomes become smaller now why don't we go all the way to slash 31 uh, for example right and the next bullet actually explains that uh, in the vcn uh, the the first two ip addresses and the last one are reserved in a typical network the first and the last are reserved right the first is network the last is broadcast in case of vcn three ip addresses are reserved. So that is the reason we stop at slash 30 networks and we don't get into networks which are uh, which are uh, smaller than that. So remember again this is an exam uh, question the three uh, IP addresses are reserved for uh, in, a, in a OCI uh, VC. Now let's look into uh, this a little bit more detail. Uh, so first thing is you see this Oracle Cloud region here right in in a typical uh, regions we had the previous uh, you know the, the the first regions we launched we started with three availability domains. So you have AD1 here, you have AD2, and you have AD3, right? So we, we always had three uh, uh, availability domain. Now, 
what it's showing here is in a region, irrespective whether it has three ADs or, or one AD, uh, the VCN is a regional service, right? So the, and how you create a VCN? You just simply specify a CIDR range. Uh, recommended recommendation is to use RFC 19. So this one is an RFC 19 range 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Uh, you specify this VCN. As you can see, it's a regional thing, right? It spans across the ADs. Now we looked into this in the in the in in the CIDR notation module. Um, you take a network and then you subdivide into into sub networks, right? So you have this concept of a network, then you have a sub network, and then you have host, right? We looked into this in the previous module. So similarly, you take a VCN and you divide this into subnets. Now each subnet you create can either be an AD specific or regional. Now what do I mean by that? AD specific basically means your subnet is contained within the AD. So you see subnet A, subnet B, and subnet C all are part of their respective availability domains. They cannot span uh, those uh, those respective ADs. Now, uh, you know, if like I said, multi AD region, uh, you you have to if you create a AD specific subnet, they are contained within that uh, AD. Now, there is also concept of a regional subnet. This is something which uh, which is relatively newer was launched a uh, few months back where your subnets if you create a regional subnet spans all the three ADs in a multi AD region. So as you can see here this particular subnet subnet D spans all the three ADs here. Whether it's a regional or a AD specific subnet, each subnet has a contiguous range of IPs in IPv4 uh, as in a VCN described in a CIDR notation. An important thing to keep in mind is the subnet IP ranges cannot overlap. So within a network, if you create subnets, just keep in mind that they cannot overlap. It seems very logical. Now, uh, why do we create subnets in the first place, right? If you ask, instances are placed in subnets. So you can see an instance here, you can see an instance here, you can see an instance here. You can see an instance here, right? And the instances draw their internal IP address and the network configuration from the subnet where they belong. Now, because of that, you can have two different um, uh, characteristics uh, in a subnet. The first is you could designate your subnets as private. What that means is instances contain private IP address and no public IP addresses. Uh, these can be your databases or for security or uh, uh, other reasons you might choose to just use private subnets. The second class of subnets are public subnets which contain both private and public IP addresses. Uh, and there is this concept we are talking about virtual network interface cards, VNIC. VNIC is a component that enables a compute instance to connect to a VCN. The VNIC determines how the instance connect with endpoints inside and outside the VCN, specifically if the VNIC has only a private IP address or also has a public and a private IP address. So literally these uh, instances here have a network card here and this network card is really important because it determines how the instances communicate both within 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 the uh, within the, the the subnet um, within the VCN and, and subnet and the VCN and all outside the VCN as well. Now with this, let's quickly jump into the console and show you a quick um, uh, demo of how you uh, create um, a VCN within uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So I'm here logged into, into uh, my um, uh, my OCI console, and if you click on this sandwich. Uh, or burger uh, menu uh, icon on, on the left hand side, you can see different tabs and you can see the networking tab right here, right? And within networking, the first uh, tab is, the first link is virtual cloud networks, VCN. And there are whole sets of things here, dynamic routing gateways, IPsec, load balancer, fast connect, public IPs, and so on and so forth, right? And we'll discuss each of them in subsequent modules. So if I click on virtual cloud network, first thing you need to notice here, which we discussed in our identity and access management module is uh, the compartments. Now, compartments are logical uh, uh, locations where you can where you can create your resources. So you need to decide where you are going to create your uh, virtual cloud network. I have been using training compartment uh, for all my training uh, uh, demos. So we'll use that so you can see the compartment here. Uh, and then there is a button here which says create virtual cloud network. So first thing I can do here is uh, I'm in US East Ashburn region, so I can use this kind of a naming uh, convention, uh, and I can say this is my first VCN 
in US East, right? And there are two options here. Uh, one says create virtual cloud network only, and the second one says create a virtual cloud network plus all the resources. So, because uh, I don't know much, let me just choose this. And you can see here, it's doing bunch of things for me, right? And I'll just click on that, uh, and I'll, I'll, create, I'll, I'll click on create here. And within, you know, a couple of seconds, uh, uh, second or less, you can see my virtual cloud network is created. And you can see this is in US East, and this is my first VCN. Now, within this VCN, a couple of things to notice. First is, uh, this is the CIDR block, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, it, you, it chose one for me. I didn't provide that. Next example, we'll actually do it um, ourselves. And it created three subnets here. Now, US East has three availability domains. So you can see that there is a subnet for each of the availability domains. So AD3 has, an, uh, has a subnet, uh, AD2 has a subnet, and AD1 has a subnet, right? Everything is available. And you, you see that it also chose CIDR blocks uh, for subnets, right? So 10.0.0 slash 24, 10.0.1.0 slash 24, 10.0.2.0 slash 24, right? So took that big network here and subdivided into smaller networks. Great, uh, pretty straightforward. Now, there are a bunch of things within a virtual cloud network, route tables, gateways, security list, um, different kinds of gateways, uh, network security groups, etc., etc. We'll we'll discuss all these uh, in subsequent uh, modules. So for now, let's you know we'll 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 skip that, right? So second uh, thing I want to show here is this was pretty straightforward, right? Uh, think about this as a default network. I really don't care about my IP addresses. I just want something quick and quick and easy. So I chose that option. If I didn't want that, right, I could come here. And I could say this is my, uh, or let's call this uh, production VCN. In US uh, East, its compartment is training. I want to create a virtual cloud network only, right? I really don't want to go and uh, create, you know, all the uh, like all the subnets and all that, right? Because I want to control uh, what kind of subnets and what kind of uh, you know, right routing, you know, the side notations I can use. So I chose 192.168.1.0 slash 24. This is the one we were using for our, uh, in our slides earlier. You can see things like DNS label. I can apply tags here. If you remember from the, the identity uh, access management module, and I can create my uh, network here. Now it's really straightforward. I got my, my network here, right? But there is no subnets here, right? You can see here, no subnets, none of the other things got created, right? Uh, so I can do that one by one. So first thing I want to do is I want to create my uh, my uh, uh, my subnets, right? So I would say this is still US East and this is my uh, public subnet. So I say public or actually I can remove uh, subnet here, just say public, that's fine. And now I can choose between regional and availability domain specific uh, subnet, right? I could do that. I can choose regional, that's fine. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, this is this region has multiple ADs. So I could have chosen um, an AD specific uh, um, subnet as well, right? And if you guys remember, these are uh, from the previous module, these are the CIDR ranges we were using, right? So 192.168.1.0 slash 24, I broke it down into a smaller network, right? You can see here 1.0 goes all the way to 1.31, right? Now it's asking me for spe some sp other specific things, right? It's a route table. I'll just choose a default route table. And now it's saying, is it public or private? So I would say it's a public subnet. I could have chosen private here as well, right? As, because it's public, I'm going to use public. And then it says, choose a, a security list, right? And both route tables, security list, we can change later on. We'll talk about that in the subsequent modules. Let me just go ahead and create a, a private network, a private subnet as well. So I say private regional is fine. Uh, I need to choose another uh, CIDR here. So remember from the, um, from the, uh, sorry, from the previous um, uh, module, we took a big network, we divided it into specific subnetworks. So in the, the first uh, CIDR, I was using 1.0, slash 27 this one is 1.32 slash 27 i could use 1.64 1.92 so, so on and so forth right so i chose that network i am using the same route table um, but in reality you would be using a different route table because it's you know a private subnet and i would choose a private subnet uh, and here i can choose the same security list but these again i can change 
uh, subsequently and now I create a subnet so very simply I created two subnets private and public uh, and I created a network and created two subnets in the next uh, module we'll talk a little bit about uh, public and private uh, IP addresses and then we'll spin up an instance uh, in both uh, subnets uh, and we'll get uh, we'll get into a little bit more details uh, on how things work thanks for joining this lecture if you have some time join the next lecture where we talk about uh, IP addressing within OCI BCN service thank you